So in order to finish up, you need to kind of have a vision for the level of finish you want. And I find that that's easiest when looking at inspiration. I mentioned before how I really like these skateboard stickers from Santa Cruz in the 80s. So I love that kind of textural fill behind clean line art. I also like some limited color holds, like you'll see here in comic book art. Sometimes you'll make your black line art actually lighter than the color that's around it, right? Like they did inside the wings here. So those are all color holds that go on top of the black line art and change it. Now the trick I want to share with you is if you open up some of your inspiration in Photoshop, you'll see I have these different programs or these different examples open. You can then go to Window and say Arrange your workspace. And I'm going to do three up stacked because I have two references. If I just had one reference, I would do two up vertical. And then you can see them all at once within the window without having to have them free floating. And what's nice about that is if I'm using a brush, let's go to a new layer here on top of my duotone shadow. I'm going to go ahead and lock these so I don't accidentally paint on the wrong layer. I'm going to plug in my tablet. Everything's locked, right? Then I have my vector line art. And I'm just going to start painting a little bit. But I'm going to steal colors from some of my different inspirations. And you do that just by holding down Option. So. All right, so if I look at these different references... I can hold down spacebar and kind of show them where I want. I like the bones here. I like the little spots of white. I like this gray. Uh, I like the yellows in these tones. So instead of trying to match them using swatches or using the color selector, that could be really hard. So instead, I just use my paintbrush or my fill bucket, whatever I want. I'm on this. And I just hold down Option, and that will turn my cursor into an eyedropper tool. And let's say for the eyes, I like the glowing eye here. What if I just scribble in a little bit of that? And I can always play with my brush, play with my hardness. Because now I've done Duotone, now I'm just... I'm going to play with full spectrum a little bit. I'm going to bring in some different tonalities. I like the little red that's in there. I like these oranges and browns. And this has got the fluorescent green, but it's not nearly as toxic looking as what I've got. Okay, so you'll notice I'm just scribbling them lightly because everything I've done is hard edged. So even though my brush is kind of middle soft, I'm doing it at 100% on this layer. Now let's see, what can I use for the helmet? Like this gray. But because I'm splitting from my duotone colors, I'm automatically making this full spectrum. Can add some browns into the purples. Can add some highlights in different places than I cut out. And I'm going to show you how, in one easy step, I'm going to change this from being hard edge to being soft edged using really the only filter I think is useful for when you're learning the basics of digital imaging and that is the Gaussian blur filter all the other filters are a lot of fun but it takes a lot of time playing with them to understand how they work and what they do Gaussian blur is very direct all it does is soften the pixels around what you have.
Now notice I'm still coloring. I'm not doing any special effects, but I'm full spectrum coloring underneath my line art. Stealing the palette from some inspiration. Unfortunately, I can't steal the textures as easily. But what looks really strong and saturated in the inspiration, like this yellow, doesn't look that crazy next to all of my kind of flats and pastels, right? In fact, when you're digital coloring, the most important thing is to get used to what are called chromatic grays. They're all just colorful versions of gray. Especially when you're using clean black line art like I am, you don't want a whole lot of super saturated color because the black and white is a strong enough contrast as it is. So by using these inspirations, I'll often find color combinations I wouldn't think of normally. And I want to hit the highlights as well as the shadows. And it might seem like I'm undoing a lot of the hard work I was doing before. But it's all on a different layer. So it's going to be fun to soften this and let it kind of bleed into the coloring I already have. It's like glazing a painting. You can put something over the top of everything. And this becomes a lot more like digital painting, except that it's digital coloring because we're doing it underneath an outline. And you can have more and more freedom as you go because you're doing them on different layers and that can always be turned off, right? So I'm just trying to augment with some, some other choices here from an inspiration palette that I think is interesting. If you've ever watched a street artist work with spray cans, it's almost magical how the illusions of depth happen and it's just all through layers, layers of color and tones, right? And the magic of it comes from a limited palette that they'll use. They have certain spray can colors they really like. They get used to them. They know how to use them. That's a lot to ask for you guys on your first spot illustration, you know, digital coloring, but it's something to think about and aspire to. Kind of finding a palette that really speaks to you. And you might find an artist you really like and want to present on in the process. So I can always take down, because I'm doing, going to turn this into soft edge, I can always take the opacity down as well. And that starts to blend these colors even more. And this is what I mean by getting to a finish. This is going to be true of all of your, your projects continuing now. Even though we have deadlines, you want to get them to a place where everything feels equally considered. So if I work up this color in the helmet, I also have to do it in the face. I also have to do it in the feathers around. There's not a lot of shortcuts I can take. Because you want it all to have one kind of even look by the end. So I'm really embracing that full spectrum. I'm even putting compliments 
in the greens, which will help deaden it. And any place that looks too flat, I'm just going to put little accents. I can use the option key and steal not just from other artists' work, but also from my own color selections. Right. And it can be helpful to do it not on a white background, but on a, a gray or a black background. Because we want that versatility. Now, because I'm just using the brush, I'm not doing any kind of selection ahead of time. Notice how I can accidentally go out of, out of bounds, right? I can color outside of the lines accidentally sometimes. I'll show you how we can clean that up. But if what I respond to in both of these is kind of some of the texture, I need to be willing to, to mess it up a little. even with such extreme colors like these greens. And even if there's not a lot of detail in your line art, you can put quite a bit of that detail in your coloring. Like these little spots of white that that artist has in their skull. We're going to save it as a PNG with the backgrounds turned off. So it's a free floating sticker. And that's the kind of image, that high resolution PNG, that you can then upload to sites like Redbubble to create a multitude of various products. Just like we saved our creature design as a PNG to put onto our landscapes, we want to save this as a PNG to put into our posters later. All right, I'm almost ready for the magic step, which is to soften all of these crisp lines. And I'll do it on a duplicate just so you can see the difference. And sometimes I just want to paint with grays at this stage as well. To get a little bit more of a street art feel to it. A little more spontaneous. Just a few areas I haven't touched, haven't messed with, and I need to to get that, that overall finish I'm going for. full spectrum so I can start putting in kind of different colors on top of each other. And there's so many ways I can still play with this, but I think you're getting the idea. We'll be doing so much more of this when we do digital painting. It's kind of free form, just reacting to what you put down. Okay, so now what can I do? Oops. I'm in trouble getting that angle. There we go. I can take that whole layer I just did, which if I isolate it just so you can see it, looks like that, right? So it does, it looks like kind of crazy graffiti detailing painting. And I'm gonna duplicate that layer just so you can see the difference. So that's my hard edged version. And now I'm gonna use filter this is the filter I recommend. You go to blur. This is when you want to make things soft edged. And I go to Gaussian blur. So filter blur, Gaussian blur. 